Welcome back to more Pikmin 2! Last time, we explored an underground cavern in the Valley of Repose, so this time, we're heading to a new area, the Awakening Wood. Good morning. It should please you to know the purple Pikmin are lodged safely in my hull. The confines of my interior seem to suit them perfectly, though they do occasionally tickle me. Stand in the ring of light below me and press A to call the purple Pikmin out. Unlike the red Pikmin, the purple Pikmin don't have their own onion, which makes it a lot more complicated in terms of growing more, so we have to rely on candy pop buds to get more purple Pikmin instead of simply collecting pellets or enemies and then taking them back to the onion. Uh, so this will be very interesting as we try to grow our numbers here. Louie, has Olimar instructed you on the peculiarities of the Pikmin creatures? The Pikmin form groups based on color when disbanded with C. Grabbing Pikmin with A will also cause them to group by color. Now, for the bonus lesson. First, press and hold A to pick up a Pikmin. Then, while you hold A, press B to swap between different colored Pikmin. This is the first time you've heard this, Olimar, remember to properly train new employees. In Olimar's defense, this actually wasn't a feature in Pikmin 1 originally, uh, it was actually introduced in Pikmin 2 and then retrofitted into the new play control version of Pikmin 1. Um, so yeah, as you're holding a Pikmin, press B to swap between Pikmin colors. Uh, this is very helpful, but it can cause some issues where uh, you might accidentally throw the wrong type of Pikmin. Um, I've definitely done that a lot. Uh, so it is still a little finicky, but it's definitely a welcome improvement over the first game, especially the GameCube version. Um, and also, um, now that we finally have purple Pikmin, uh, we we don't have to worry as much about combat compared to like day two with the bulb orb. Uh, so to demonstrate, I'm actually going to split off the group. Um, I'm going to send the red Pikmin uh, to start tearing down this wall back here, and then we'll uh, go through and cl clear out some of the enemies with Louie uh, using the purple Pikmin. We also have one of these little wisp enemies that drops uh, nectar like in the first game. We'll investigate that more in uh, greater detail in a bit, um, but purple Pikmin, because they um, have a much greater impact when landing, uh, they can basically one-shot enemies very easily, and if they miss, uh, they can actually stun enemies. Um, so if you uh, throw Pikmin really precisely, you might notice the little, uh, little like, um, stun icons around the um, enemy, which basically means they are temporarily uh, unable to, like, um, move at all. So if you can stun an enemy, uh, that basically trivializes combat. Um, the problem is some enemies, which we'll see later, are very difficult to actually stun. Uh, also, um, the purple Pikmin, because they don't have an onion of their own, will basically take it to a random onion, uh, but if you toss a specific Pikmin to an object being carried to an onion, like if we tossed a red Pikmin on uh, to this group, uh, carrying the bulb board back, uh, that will automatically cause them to carry it to the red onion. Um, obviously that's kind of a non-issue at the moment when we only have um, like two types of Pikmin, uh, but once we get uh, some more types of Pikmin, you will notice later on that um, it is based on um, um, if there are any other colors of Pikmin carrying the object back, or uh, also let's actually go over this, try to uh, get some nectar for our group, try to knock this enemy out of the sky, like so. Woo! 
The Pikmin that drank that yellow nectar instantly matured into Flower Pikmin. It appears to have enhanced motor skills. What a wondrous nectar! How intriguing. Like plants, Pikmin mature from leaf to bud to flower. Captain Olimar, you must share the information you have with your subordinate, Louie. I also find the storytelling method of Pikmin 2 very interesting, how the ship uh, basically narrates, instead of having Olimar narrate like in the first game. Um, once we start building up our numbers, we actually will run into a problem, and uh, you might have noticed something off in the distance during the flyover cutscene at the beginning. Um, that will cause a problem in terms of actually growing more Pikmin uh, beyond a certain point. Olimar, we have a problem. The onion has ceased ejecting seeds. Is it malfunctioning? Interesting. It now seems the number of life forms within the onion has increased. Didn't you note that no more than 100 Pikmin will venture onto the planet at once? But I currently observe only 95 on the surface. Could there be wild Pikmin somewhere? So yeah, there are five Pikmin uh, who are already out of the onion, and even though they're not in our current group, that still counts towards the total, uh, which is very interesting. Our first treasure here is the Sunseed Berry, worth 170 Pokos, uh, raising our total to 1100. And with that, we've reached our first milestone of 10% uh, of the debt repaid. Uh, next up, we have this little buried enemy over here. Uh, this enemy can be a little bit tricky to fight uh, because it's buried. Um, so let's carefully take our squad of purple Pikmin. Uh, as soon as it emerges from the ground, let's try to toss purple Pikmin to stun it. Um, because if we can't stun it, that might cause a problem. Uh, its uh, back is invulnerable. We can only attack its face. Um, which also makes it a little bit tricky. Um, there's also another fairly annoying enemy up ahead um, that we will be fighting right away. Uh, this little like chrysanthemum, ch chrysanthemum here um, has eyes, so if we approach it, uh, it's not a flower. Um, it is an enemy. Um, so yeah, this enemy can be annoying if you don't stun it. Um, but we did stun it right away, so we are free to swarm it with the rest of our Pikmin and take it out very easily. Um, but with that, the way is cleared uh, to this area. There's a paper bag. Uh, this one requires 200 Pikmin, uh, so we're not getting past that anytime soon. Uh, so for now, let's head over here to another cave. Exert, exert. Biological sensors are reacting violently. The readings are ominous. A beast of unknown power lurks in these depths. A large Pikmin group would be reassuring. My sound sensors are picking up hostile roars of many beasts. Expect dangerous encounters. Sensors are also showing extreme heat pockets. You may need flame-resistant Pikmin. But my records indicate no such data. Are my records incomplete? Did Olimar never mention that the red Pikmin resist fire? Uh, in any case, our next uh, cavern is the Hole of Beasts.
From now on, the caves are going to be a little bit more interesting uh, because the layouts are actually randomized. Um, so like the treasure locations and some of the structures of the level are random, uh, which can make it a little bit difficult to find everything, uh, including like even the exit. And also like some of the enemy spawns can occasionally be very rude. Um, the one thing that does make some of these underground sections a little bit more manageable is that the game actually autosaves between each, um, between each floor. So you can easily save and reset if something goes horribly awry, uh, which I guarantee something will. Um, there still will be a deathless run of this game, even though this is actually kind of a tricky game to play deathless like in one go, uh, but it will be resetting if necessary, which I guarantee it will be necessary because this game, again, does have some very challenging levels. Um, over here we have a very familiar looking uh, D-pad, um, so let's carry that back. I'm trying to remember if there's any other treasures here. Uh, there is actually a sound that plays once you've found all the treasures on the floor, um, but it's actually pretty subtle until we find an upgrade, uh, so I'm trying not to miss it, to be honest. For 100 Pokos, we have the Stone of Glory. It's really faint, but that sound indicates that uh, we are done with this floor and are good to move on. Next up, we have a fairly chill sub-level. We had some um, enemies on the previous floor, though it wasn't anything too difficult to deal with. Uh, but here, we actually have a rest floor of sorts, even though it's only floor two. Uh, we just got started and we're already kind of being given a break here. Um, but the importance of this floor is we have candy pop buds. Uh, so if you press um, down, down on the d-pad, I was checking which direction it was, uh, we can also cycle through the flower status of Pikmin. Uh, so let's toss the leaf Pikmin in particular in here, um, since we're going to get leaf Pikmin uh, anyway, so we don't want to waste any of our flowers. Um, so yeah, if you actually go through the Emergence Cave a second time to get more purple Pikmin, uh, these candy pop buds will not show up. So that's why I feel like it's not overly worthwhile going through the cave a second time, uh, since we will end up with 20 Pikmin here anyway. The only benefit of that is we can get past that paper bag a little bit earlier and basically do something a little bit out of sequence, but it's overall not worth it. Uh, so yeah, we're basically going in order for now. There was one purple Pikmin, or maybe two, that did not get Nectar, so we are good to go now. Okay, it was actually more than I thought. Um, but yeah, there are no treasures on this floor. Uh, so we are good to move on. Again, it's a little bit scary at first because it's a little bit harder to keep track of treasures uh, through this uh, second cavern. And now we have a hazard that we haven't actually seen yet, uh, fire. Uh, but fire is actually kind of not an issue in this game, because unlike in Pikmin 1, you can actually break the fire geysers. Um, this is actually really broken, uh, and actually kind of removes a lot of the usefulness of red Pikmin. Um, one of my biggest issues with the game is actually how balanced it is, and by that I mean how unbalanced it is. Um, 
you know, the red Pikmin were the best at fighting originally, um, but now purple Pikmin fill that role. Um, because fire geysers can be broken by any type of Pikmin with good timing, um, that also means that the fire resistance is not particularly helpful either. So oddly enough, even though they were very helpful in the first game, I do feel like red Pikmin do not help that much in this game. Um, I mostly use them to get more purple Pikmin using Candy Pop Buds, but beyond that, I do feel like all of the other Pikmin types in this game are actually inherently better, which is kind of a shame. I think Pikmin 3 kind of fixed that problem, but this game definitely has some uh, balancing issues with the uh, squad composition. For 230 Pokos, we have a Famicom Disk System disc called the Cosmic Archive. And we have a Mahjong tile called the Strife Monolith for 150 Pokos. So we're good to go, so we can swap over and uh, immediately exit because Olimar is already over here. So next up we have more fire, the exit's right over there. Um, there actually isn't a ton going on on this floor. Um, I'm a little bit surprised, but maybe there's stuff over here. Uh, yep, here we go. Uh, we have another red ball board. Um, luckily we have 20 purple Pikmin now, so it's definitely a pushover. <laughs> it's stunned and defeated before it even gets a chance to do anything. Uh, we also have another purple candy pop bud, uh, bringing our total up to um, 25 purple Pikmin. Um, not to get too ahead of myself, uh, but we actually need a very specific number of purple Pikmin for this adventure. And by that I mean we need a whopping um, 100 purple Pikmin for something later on. Um, so yeah, we should definitely start working on that as soon as possible, uh, because that will take a while. Um, it lines up in such a way that you will probably end up with enough by the end, uh, but you may have to uh, farm a few uh, dungeons in order to actually get enough. We will probably be doing that off screen if necessary, and I guarantee it will be necessary. Next up, we have the Ball Game & Watch handheld, uh, worth 280 Pokos and called the Dream Architect. This is kind of like the Nintendo fan service dungeon at this rate. And we have a 140 Poco uh, card called the Luck Wafer. I feel like this game is where I learned that Nintendo actually started out doing board games originally, and like card games, uh, because of how many like uh, retro collectibles have been in this dungeon. Um, so let's actually uh, build up our uh, flowers back to a full squad here, other than the red Pikmin that are still in the onion. Um, there's also a special enemy that can pop out of certain eggs, um, but luckily we didn't have to deal with that, or unluckily actually, it can actually be a good thing uh, to find that, uh, but we're good to move on. Oh! <laughs> 
for our final floor, we have our first boss fight. A very intimidating enemy, uh, so let's toss as many purple Pikmin as possible to get a head start in the fight. Uh, we have a fight with the Empress Bulblacks. I feel like it's not a good start uh, when they're already um, throwing throwing a Bulblacks at you at the very uh, second dungeon or cavern. Uh, but here we go. This is a lot easier than, than the Emperor Ball Blacks in Pikmin 1 specifically. I need to specify for reasons that will be apparent uh, later on. Um, it's kind of a nice little tutorial fight getting you used to like throwing Pikmin and then calling them back with proper timing uh, so they don't get squished when uh, the Empress Ball Blacks starts rolling. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a timing fight. I tend to take it um, I tend to play this a little bit safer than I would have to. I could definitely clock a little bit more damage, uh, but especially with this being a deathless run, um, I am deliberately trying to take my time a little bit and avoiding taking too many risks uh, to avoid too many flat Pikmin. Um, so yeah, one more cycle should be enough. Uh, there are also other things we need to worry about later on, uh, but yeah, this first... Uh, this fight with the Empress Bolt Blacks is not anything to worry about. Um, and we should be good to go after this uh, phase. And hopefully we'll get a treasure for this. How bizarre! This device is emitting black light. It must have been ingested by that creature. What an absolutely repulsive life form. Our return to Hokotate cannot come soon enough. Alright, so we have another old Nintendo product, if I'm not mistaken, the Love Tester. Um, which I, I remember actually being a, a minigame in Mario Party Advance of all things. That's a very specific uh, association with this item. Um, but this is a very special treasure. Some treasures are, uh, which we'll actually see when the Pikmin uh, eventually carry it back. Even as flowers, this takes a while. Worth 200 Pokos, we have the Prototype Detector. This contraption seems to react when it approaches treasure. I will connect it to my radar. Processing complete. The treasure gauge is now fully operational. It will now appear on your monitor. The needle will move right as you approach treasure. So now, in addition to the sound cue, we have a dedicated radar for treasure, making it much easier to find everything we're looking for. And we are ready to leave. With 1,100 Pokos worth of treasure and no Pikmin lost, we have completed another dungeon. I double-checked, and Totaka's song plays if you wait on this screen for over three and a half minutes on the GameCube version. It does not actually play in the Wii version for unknown reasons. With 20% of the debt recovered, our next stop is actually the cave, uh, or something on the opposite side. Now that we have 20 purple Pikmin, uh, we'll actually be able to get past this, and yeah, there's a cave on the other side. Um, 
And we also have the radar now. It reacts on the overworld and in caverns, which is very helpful. Uh, yeah, we actually have more than enough purple Pikmin to weigh this down now. Um, I like how they give you 25, just in case you do lose a few. Uh, so you will still have more than enough to weigh that down, assuming things don't go too badly in that dungeon. Um, so let's try to quickly defeat this enemy and uh, see what lies ahead in the second uh, cavern. Astounding! My metal detectors are reacting violently. What could be down below? If you find tr trouble below, press plus to contact me and press right on the D-pad on the radar screen. The exploration pod will drop its loot to make room to carry you, Louie and the Pikmin to safety. I also hear sounds of Pikmin in the distance. Uh, we'll be investigating that after this. But our next cavern is the White Flower Garden.